I'm Maggie Snowling and I'm a psychologist. Um, I'm at St John's College, Oxford and the Department of Experimental Psychology. The starting point for our review was the knowledge in the field of reading and uh, more broadly literacy development. Um, reading has been the subject of scientific inquiry now for many years and so we have amassed quite a lot of evidence both about what the processes involved in reading are and also about what predicts individual differences in reading attainment. So basically the foundation of uh, reading, which is of course a written language skill, is spoken language. And we know that uh, children who come to school with good oral language at school entry are children who do best in the reading stakes. Of course the corollary of that is that if you come to school with poor oral language then you are likely to have problems with literacy. Um, we know something more specific about the relationship between oral language and uh, literacy development than, uh, than this. We know that phonological aspects of language, these are the aspects of language which are um, concerned with speech and, and speech processing, are important for learning to decode, certainly in alphabetic languages in which there are relationships between the letters and sounds. And basically this is because if you, have, if you want to understand those letter-sound relationships, you have to understand how the sounds of spoken words uh, link to the letters of printed words. And we know, uh, in addition, that if you want to learn to understand what you read, and of course the goal of uh, reading is really understanding, we need other language resources uh, beyond those phonological resources. We need uh, a good vocabulary, we need a good command of the grammar and we need good understanding of, um, if you like, the pragmatics of the language, the, the language of communication. So um, our starting point is this large body of knowledge. Um, what we wanted to do when we turned to look at research in uh, developing countries was to uh, try to understand um, First of all, what was known about the relationship between oral language and written language skills um, in the many different languages in developing countries and um, the very um, multilingual context, but also how the skills a child brings to the task of learning to read um, predict their educational attainments, and also how the context influences um, learning to read. So obviously children learn to read sometimes in homes, sometimes in schools, uh, whole communities uh, create educational systems and these contextual factors we expected also to be, a, be important in understanding um, literacy development in, in developing countries. We've conducted um, a rigorous review um, which um, in the end uh, turned up over two, well almost 300 papers which were um, fairly uh, high in quality and from which we can um, extract uh, information that can guide us in policy recommendations for uh, developing countries. More broadly, if, if to, in answer to the question, um, is the evidence base robust, I would say yes and no. So um, of the papers that we um, focused on, those that we, that we extracted data from, um, we, we have good evidence. On the other hand, we are very well aware that there are many, many more papers um, which contain valuable information, but which um, when uh, validated or, or evaluated against uh, rigorous methodological criteria, fall short of these criteria. So there is quite a lot of knowledge, particularly about local practices, um, which really as researchers we do need to know about, but which we haven't um, been able to um, uh, really uh, read because of the, the lower quality of the, of the methodology of these, um, of these papers. Um, the papers that we have um, looked at uh, contain both quantitative studies and also qualitative studies that allow us to say quite a lot about um, how individual differences in children's um, skills and also the context in which they learn um, affect their attainments. And what's, I suppose, been really very remarkable 
is that in spite of the complex uh, multilingual um, context of education in developing countries, the findings from the research that we've looked at are very similar to what we know from uh, developed uh, countries, developed educational systems. So um, the, the research um, review has been quite uh, salutary, both in um, highlighting what is known um, and seeing parallels between what is known and, and, and what we know um, from um, a much larger uh, literature uh, that already exists, um, but also highlighting um, gaps and um, importantly highlighting where we don't have enough information about embedding this research into local um, practices. The focus of much of the research on um, literacy development in developing countries has been on very basic reading processes. Uh, that is, the processes involved in children learning to decode print, and often that research has been carried out by researchers in um, the US uh, or Europe, and um, therefore it's very much through um, a Western lens. So um, there are quite crucial gaps in our, um, in our research uh, base. First of all, we need to know a lot more about uh, the local context and how that interacts with children's learning and learning opportunities. Uh, but secondly, returning to the actual issues of uh, reading, we need to know much more about um, spelling and writing um, particularly about how children um, might be able to express their ideas um, on paper. We need to know, um, we need to focus much more on reading comprehension. Um, the goal of reading isn't just decoding, it's understanding and there's a real scarcity of research on uh, reading comprehension. Um, turning to the uh, context in which children are learning, which is very multilingual, we um, have very little knowledge of how the home uh, language um, and individual differences in the um, competencies in the home language will affect learning in the language of instruction and in particular which combinations of language um, allow better transfer of learning from one to the other um, and which um, present obstacles for, for children learning. Um, so they're just some of the research gaps in terms of our basic understanding and um, importantly for educational practice there are huge gaps in our understanding of what um, counts as an effective uh, intervention. So whereas in um, the, uh, in the sort of Western uh, research literature we now can say with some certainty what the best um, practices are for learning to uh, decode here we know that a very systematic phonic approach is important. Um, we know a lot about what promotes reading comprehension and here work on um, broad oral language skills um, is very helpful. Uh, but we have no such um, research or very little such research from developing countries. Rather what we see there are um, Western programs which have kind of been dropped in um, to the local community, uh, rolled out often very effectively. But we really have no knowledge of what makes those programs work um, when they do work and we have no evidence about the um, contextual, particularly the local contextual factors that might um, affect how well the intervention works. So there's a big uh, agenda there in terms of understanding effective interventions. In order, in order to understand um, early literacy better, um, there is really quite a research agenda. Um, first of all, we need to understand more about the preschool development of language in the multilingual uh, context of the developing world, and we need to know how the uh, oral language skills that children bring to school uh, affect the, uh, their development of reading and related skills in what might be a language of instruction that's different from the uh, home language. Um, we also need to understand um, how different educational contexts um, 
affect the efficacy of an intervention. So rather than um, just, for instance, demonstrating that an intervention that might be used in the UK works in an African setting, this kind of um, research has been done, what we need to know is how, if we adapt such an intervention, um, taking account of um, local cultural practices, um, how much more effective that might be. Um, and we need to be comparing different kinds of interventions. Um, there's a tendency to want to, um, if you want to promote reading, to go in and to um, teach reading. But actually there's quite uh, a significant amount of evidence that says it, that a lot of the um, gains that you can make in reading depend upon gains in oral language skills. So we need to know how oral language interventions um, can form a better foundation for learning to read and we also need to understand how those oral language interventions can be made explicit enough to make the link with reading and broader literacy processes. Um, so these are just some of what is really quite a, a wide agenda um, but in terms of priorities, I think we always need to keep oral language at the fore. We need to always be um, mindful of the fact that we're talking about multilingual communities and we need to be mindful of the fact that um, just implementing Western approaches without taking account of um, cultural context um, is never going to be very effective, not least because it may not be valued by the local culture. In terms of um, future research and future research priorities, I would say that given what we found in this research review is a remarkable similarity between findings from the West and findings from developing countries, that we're actually in a good position to begin by uh, trialing um, interventions. So although there is still a big agenda in terms of basic um, understanding, um, I think the time is ripe to um, trial interventions which we know have been successful in um, other contexts. So we, we, the starting point are, is effective interventions and these would be for oral language, for word level reading and for reading comprehension. Um, these um, uh, interventions need first of all to be adapted to um, local practices and that should be done in the, in the country in which the um, intervention is going to be um, evaluated and that could be done by um, smaller pilot projects and then we need to um, go to um, a systematic randomized control trial I think to understand in a rigorous way um, how these um, interventions uh, can work and what um, moderates their impact and so ideally, rather than focusing just on one country, I'd say we should be comparing the, similar, the same sort of um, intervention at base, but in different um, contexts with different adaptations. This could be within a country comparing, say, um, urban versus rural settings. Um, it could be um, a comparison between uh, two countries. Um, but I think we need to always to be um, very rigorous in our approach and have it founded on what is known to be effective and um, evaluated in a rigorous way. If we do that we can look at issues um, such as the interaction between the context and the characteristics of individual learners um, and um, we can also um, uh, look at um, issues like what predicts the response of individual children um, to these interventions. Now if we're going to do that there is still substantial uh, groundwork to be done for instance in developing the sorts of uh, assessment tools which would be um, important um, for measuring um, progress of children um, in these interventions and these need to be fairly um, uh, easy to administer, so they can be administered by relatively um, unskilled staff and they need to be uh, very reliable and, um, and, and robust. Um, so there are, there's basic work to be done in order to um, roll out and evaluate interventions, but I think these um, are the next steps. Um, and I think in, in my view I would be going for some work on um, early language in the preschool years, which may actually co-opt uh, 
uh, members of the local community like parents or older siblings of these children and also school age interventions in the, in the uh, early school years uh, which would focus on developing word level decoding skills and uh, also integrating oral language so that these children are well placed to go on to develop uh, reading comprehension and be ready for the next uh, educational stage.